Welcome to the immersive reading of the new edition of the Underground Railroad, Next Stop Toronto, brought to you by Dundurn Press and FreeConference.com. We hope you enjoy your experience as you listen to the passage, Underground Railroad to Toronto, narrated by Alison Isaac. The Underground Railroad was not a real railroad. The term referred to the system of secret routes and safe houses by which enslaved fugitives made their way to freedom. Wilbur Siebert in The Underground Railroad, From Slavery to Freedom, tells us that the term may have originated in 1831, when a man enslaved in Kentucky, Tice Davids, escaped across the Ohio River and disappeared from view. David's owner, who had been in hot pursuit, watched as his human property swam across the river. Once the enslaved man reached the opposite shore, however, he could not be found. After a lengthy search, David's owner remarked, the abolitionists must have a railroad under the ground. Because steam locomotion was a new form of transportation, the name Underground Railroad caught on and was used by abolitionists as a metaphor to describe their activities in assisting escaped enslaved persons. This railroad terminology included stations or stops, houses in which sympathizers took in fugitives temporarily, station masters, or the selfless people who took them in, and conductors, who risked their own lives and liberty in transporting runaways from one point to the next. Cargo was a human freight that risked all for their very freedom. The Underground Railroad involved many people of goodwill, all willing to take risks, including indigenous people and both blacks and whites. These courageous individuals provided shelter, food, clothing, and secrecy to assist the refugees. Sometimes, conductors drove wagons, carriages, or carts with people hidden in false compartments. At other times, freedom seekers were disguised as enslaved men driving the carriages of their owners, who were, in reality, underground railroad workers. Sometimes, such refugees were dressed in fancy clothing, women dressed up as men and men as women, and those who were light-skinned pretended to be white people or even slave owners. Husband and wife, William and Ellen Craft, were able to win their freedom by disguising themselves as slave and master because Ellen had light skin and she put on male clothing. There were numerous cases of freedom seekers hiding in crates and being shipped north by rail. Henry Box Brown acquired his nickname as a result of having escaped this way. He would spend the latter part of his life in Toronto, living close to the Blackburn home just west of the Don River. A number of people risked their lives by making trips into the South to snatch their loved ones from the jaws of slavery. Perhaps the best known Underground Railroad conductor was Harriet Tubman. This incredible woman is believed to have returned 13 times to the Southern states, where slavery was a part of everyday life, to rescue dozens of bonds people. Harriet Tubman had herself fled Maryland slavery. From 1851 to 1857, she made St. Catharines, Canada West, her base of operations. The Moses of her people was never caught and was able to bring her brothers and aged parents to St. Catharines with her. As Harriet once exclaimed, I never ran my train off the track and I never lost a passenger. We hope you enjoyed the passage, Underground Railroad to Toronto. To learn more or to purchase a copy of the Underground Railroad Next Stop Toronto, visit dundurn.com.